Hi everyone, this is Allie with MCAT Mastery. Today we're going to be going over some strategies for effectively using flashcards on the psychology, sociology section of the MCAT. This section is really about memorization. Honestly, it's recognizing terms. It's being able to discern what concepts are being tested, whether they be in the passage, the question, or the answer choices, and then eliminating based on your understanding so that you can find the correct answer. For a lot of top scorers, flashcards, usually on key, was the magic that made all of this information stick. The most important part of this entire process is not just understanding the definition of each term or concept, but actually understand the application or how each of them are applied in the passage or in the question. In order to understand the application, we think that the best way is to create flashcards based off of questions you see and get these questions from either AAMC or UWorld because these two sources are the most representative of what you will see on test day. You can of course use any other source, but we find that these two are the best. So I'm going to be going over four different strategies that you can use to excel by using flashcards on this section of the MCAT. So starting with strategy number one, something that I ran into multiple times, an issue that I ran into on the psych SOG question was mixing up either parts of a theory, of an individual theory or a blanket theory, or mixing up terms that either sounded similar or had the same word in their term. So for example, a lot of terms in psychology and sociology start with the word social. This drew, drove me insane. I could not get them straight. I think I had flashcards with 12 different socials and I just couldn't figure them out. Some of them were related, some of them were completely unrelated, but either way, it was a lot of socials to get straight. In a similar way, I sometimes mixed up the theories of, let's say, emotion. But that might be a basic theory, but there's many different theories that you have to know on this exam that you might mix up the three or four theories that are involved in the blanket term of emotion or crime. And what I would do for both of these situations was the same. I would put all of the concepts or the terms on one flashcard because I found that, let's say for the theories of crime, I would have the three flashcards for the theories of crime scattered throughout my Anki deck and I would see one of them on Monday when I did flashcards and sometimes I wouldn't see the other ones until three to five days later. And not having them in the same flashcard really didn't help to cement these theories for me. So instead, I put them onto one flashcard and I did that for all the socials, I did that for the theories of emotion, because that's how you're gonna see it on the actual MCAT. You will either see all of these answer choices together or you'll be given one of them and you have to remember which one is this out of the three or the five or the seven that I have memorized, which one is this referring to? And when I tested myself in groups like that, I found that the information really cemented itself so much better. Going off of these flashcards and the information that you are putting on them, it's really important to not dive too far into detail on these terms and these concepts, especially those that aren't the highest yield on this section. The reason is a lot of the psych social section is really recognition. It's do I know in general what this concept or this term is talking about? You don't need to know the nitty gritty details on the majority of terms being tested. And if you do, that's a sure way to get confused and get terms mixed up in your head because you have so many definitions floating on upstairs. I have a great example for this. I was once taking an exam and there were two terms that I did not recognize as an answer choice and one of them had to do with emotion and one of them had to do with crime. And the question was about emotion. So of course, naturally the answer choice would be the one regarding emotion. Unfortunately, I didn't know that the differential association theory was regarding to crime. And I went ahead and checked that as the answer choice because I didn't recognize it. If I just knew that the differential association differential association theory had to do with crime and not with emotion, not even the specific details of that distinct theory, then I would have gotten the question right. The MCAT really is a mile long and an inch deep, and I think the PS section really embodies this characteristic of the MCAT. And a great way of identifying some of the terms that you're weak on or some of the ones that maybe you don't have a general understanding of is by using either the 300 or the 86 page Khan Academy document that floats all around on Reddit. We will link it below for you. 
And if you have the time, I would absolutely take a look over this. Some top scorers say that they just dove into that in the couple weeks leading up to their test. So that moves us on to strategy number three, which is also having to do with where you get the content of your flashcard. And we know that we should be using a lot of question-based examples. However, rather than just writing down the explanation that UWorld or AAMC gives you, I think it is so important to research. I can't stress this strategy enough. This is my favorite one. Before I started researching, I would just put down the first definition that I found on Google or on AAMC or whatever the first source that I found was. And I thought, great, I have the definition written down. I will go on my merry way and I will understand this term. Unfortunately, that's not really the way our brains work, at least most of the time, unless that first definition that you found was just the best, most solid definition with an incredible analogy that made it just click in your brain it's likely that this really isn't permanently understood in your brain, which we would like it to be. And a way of getting there is by researching using multiple sources. If you don't understand a term or if something isn't that familiar to you, go on two, three, four different sources until it really does make sense to you. Find that definition or that analogy or that example that really makes the most sense to you and your brain, because it'll be different for every person. I would go on YouTube to watch videos. I would go on Google to search for some other source of evidences. I'd go on Reddit. I'd just search the entire web to find what is giving me the best parallel and what is going to make this click for me. And then using that research, I would try to put the term in my own words. I would try to draw a personal analogy because we know that anything that relates to us in our personal lives will more easily be recalled in the future. And by using that strategy partnered with the research, I think that you will really understand these terms so much more than just going with the first thing that you find. The way that I would know if I had done enough research is, can I teach this to somebody without them asking any questions or them saying, wait, this part doesn't make sense. And could I understand those follow-up questions when they asked them? If there were follow-up questions that were reasonable, of course, and I had no idea what the answers were, then I probably didn't do my research. I probably don't actually understand it. I probably just understand it at very surface level that is composed of basically just straight memorization. And I know we're talking about memorization when it comes to flashcards, but that doesn't mean memorizing the words that are on the flashcard and knowing the order that the words come in. It's memorizing the concept behind it. And if there is understanding there, then even better. But memorizing doesn't just mean there are 10 words and this is the string and the order in which they come in. That means you do not understand the concept enough to apply it on the MCAT. Our last strategy is a strategy that a lot of top scorers use, which is to either use the definitions that you find in a passage or two as you're going through it, or use the definitions that you find in a full length. So starting with just the passage base, let's say you're doing your practice and you do one or two psych or soch questions. Go ahead and identify the terms that you did not answer correctly or anything else that you weren't familiar with and then make on-key flashcards and then go to your Kaplan content books or if you have Princeton review books or any other thing that you're using to prepare, take that book and find where that definition was discussed in whatever chapter and read through their explanations. So you, there will usually only be maybe a paragraph, maybe even less per definition, but this will really help you to identify what sections of those books that you need to be reading of the psych social sections. They have many terms in those books and I don't necessarily think it's worth going through the entire book for the psych soch section. If it's not being tested, if it's not coming up on the exams, then you don't need to know it. And they have a lot of niche terms that unless you have a ton of time to study, I wouldn't really spend a lot of time worrying about. And this is a great way to identify, okay, what should I be reading? So you get a question wrong, or even if you get a question right, you can find that term in this book, look it over, and it'll really help to cement that further. And then you will have that flashcard and on key for the future to go over it and think, okay, did I understand this reading after I created this flashcard? If I do, then great. If not, I can go back to the book or I can go back and do more research like we talked about earlier. Another related effective strategy that I mentioned earlier is by using full lengths. 
So after you finish a full length test, you can write down every single answer choice or term that you did not understand, did not recognize, or are not that comfortable with. Once you have all those written down, you can go to your content books again, go to the index and find the definitions. You can then create flashcards using these definitions and then just drill these cue cards until you're at about 80% for these and continue to do that hopefully every night because exposure is the best, but if you don't have the time, just as often as you can and keep going until you have your percentages up. Similarly with the last thing that I talked about, if you are doing these flashcards and you're thinking, I don't really think I have a full understanding of this. I have questions or I'm doing these flashcards with a friend and they have questions. That's when you go back and you do your research. You can buff up the definition or the examples that you gave so that you have the full understanding and then you can move on fully understanding the concept. I hope you have enjoyed these psych soch flashcard strategies. If you liked this and you want to have some more strategies for the MCAT, I will make sure that we link some more sources below from MCAT Mastery. And we're also here to tutor, I'm here to tutor, and we'd love to have you in a tutoring session so that we can work one-on-one -on -one to work through some of the struggles that you're having on the MCAT. You are doing great, keep up the good work, and I will see you next time, bye.